Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is types of orbitals in the quantum model of the atom, and also electron configurations. The quantum model of the atom tends to describe orbitals. Orbitals, remember, are the paths that electrons will take around the nucleus of an atom. First off, they're s orbitals. These are shaped spherically and can hold at most two electrons. Next are p orbitals. These are shaped kind of like dumbbells and can hold at most six electrons. D orbitals, which I say are kind of flower shaped, they've got four, as I call them, petals. These hold at most ten electrons. And last, f orbitals, which have a variety of va very odd shapes, but these hold at most fourteen electrons. Remember, mostly, the important thing is the number of electrons they hold. That can be applied to electron configuration, but there's one other tool you need, and that's the periodic table, which we have right here. First, block the periodic table into four different sections, S, P, D, and F, to correspond to the orbitals. The S block is groups 1, 2, and the element helium. The P block is groups 3 through 8, with the exception of helium. D block is all your transition metals, and F block are the lanthanides and actinides at the bottom of the table. Your teacher will sometimes need you to write out an electron configuration of an element, or, get based on the electron configuration they've given you, identify the element. So let's run through a simple one first. Lithium, atomic number 3. When writing out an electron configuration, start out with hydrogen. The first thing you write is your period number, 1. Then you write what orbital you're in, S, P, D, or F. You check which block you're in. Hydrogen is in the S block, so 1, S. And then add electrons up here in superscript, counting from left to right, until you get to your element. 1, 2, and we're at helium. But here we have to stop and write a 2 here, because S orbitals can only hold at most 2 electrons. We need to start a new orbital. Well, we're down here at lithium to add a new electron, so 2, all right, we have a new period. We're still in the S block, though, S, and then just one for lithium. And so lithium's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. Let's do something a bit larger. Let's say we're working with gallium. Gallium's atomic number 31. Let's start out with hydrogen again. 1s, 1, 2. To lithium. 2s block, 1, 2. Okay, now we're going to head across the table from beryllium to boron. Now we're in the P block. So, while our period is still 2, we put in a P instead. Remember, P orbitals can hold up to 6 electrons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that one's filled. Head down. Now we're in the third period. 3, S block, 1, 2. Head over into the P block. 3P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Head down. Now we're in the fourth row. I'm going to continue down here. 4, S block, 1, 2. Now I've hit the D block. You might expect me to write 4D and then count out our electrons. Well, there's a special rule, and I wrote that down here. You see this minus 1 corresponds to the period. Instead of writing our regular period as we did with our S and P orbitals, we're going to write 1 less than the period for our D orbital. So instead of 4D, 3D. A similar rule applies to the F block once you get there. Instead of writing the number of your period, write down two less than that. So anyway, back to our example. 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. D orbitals can hold up to 10 electrons. And now we're back to p orbitals. So same as your period, 4p, 1. And that's gallium. So now you've probably realized that some electron configurations can get hideously long. So let me write you write xenon out for you. That's atomic number 54. That's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Let me just bring this down here since I'm running out of room. 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6. So that's ridiculously long. And we could even take this a step further, further and make it Cesium, Cs, atomic number 55. To do that, we add on 6s1. Well, there's a simple, easy way to write all this out without having to write all of it out. And that is called noble gas shorthand. We put in square brackets, the chemical symbol of the noble gas right before our element to stand in for its electron configuration. So we know that cesium 
has xenon's electron configuration and then 6s1. We can just erase all of xenon's electron configuration and instead write in square brackets its chemical symbol xe in whatever's left over. Remember, just go look back and see the noble gas that happened before, then add in anything you need else. Okay, to recap, the four types of orbitals in the quantum model are s, p, d, and f. S holds two electrons max, P6, D10, F14. Using these, you can block the table. Groups 1 and 2 and helium are S block. Groups 3 through 8, with the exception of helium, is the P block. D block is your transition metals, and F is your lanthanides and actinides. Using that, you can write out an electron configuration to show what electrons are in your element. Start out with hydrogen, write out the number of your period first, then, what block you're in determines what orbital you're in, and right on top of that, the number of electrons going along, filling up, until you reach your desired element. If you get into a rather large one, you can write noble gas shorthand, omit the electron configuration of the last noble gas, and write the chemical symbol in square brackets. Then attach whatever's left over for your desired element, and you're done. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.